Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today I'm gonna to be painting Mardi Gras mask and I'm gonna be sipping on a little Cabernet. And if you enjoy this video, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you'll find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and prime 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today my colors are titanium white, burnt umber, which I'll call brown, Mars black, fluorescent purple, deep yellow, and fallow green. And of course, you can switch up those colors if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a piece of white chalk, and I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number eight round brush and I have a number one round brush, and I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. Of course, you can switch those up a little bit too if you'd like to. Uh, if you're painting along with me, you'll probably want a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying them. And down below this video, I do provide you with a couple of additional resources that can help you through your painting process. You can find the resources in the video description down below the video. What you're going to find there is you're going to find a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the fancy palette and the brushes and paint and all that good stuff. So that's down there for you. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we are painting our background for the entire canvas. I'm gonna be using my large brush and I'm gonna be using black, brown, and white. I'm going to be doing a gradient from dark to light down at the bottom. I'm just going for a, a kind of a mysterious dark look that is almost like there's a wall in the background that is really in the dark and then our objects are going to be sitting on maybe like a table of sorts that gets lighter as it comes towards the viewer. So that's why I'm going to be going dark to light. I'm going to start with black on my brush. I'm gonna be going left to right as I apply my paint. And as I come down the canvas, I'm gonna come down maybe about a third of the way with just black. And then I'm gonna start introducing brown onto my brush, and then I'll start introducing white as well. And you'll see it naturally get um, lighter and lighter as I come down the canvas. I will not be washing my brush throughout this process, but you will, um, as, as I'm going about it, you'll see that I travel down and back up my canvas with my dirty brush, and that way it allows for the gradient to blend together. So right now I'm just picking up some brown on my brush to get this black to start working its way off of my brush in a nice natural type tone, tone color. I like my, my paints to be on the warmer side, so adding this brown with the black certainly helps to keep it on the warmer side. You can also paint the edges, whoops, the edges of your canvas as you go along, or you can paint them later. Some people like to paint them the edges of their canvas, which helps them to give a nice finished look along the edges. I just picked up some black and brown on my brush as I'm continuing to come down the canvas. In a minute, I'm gonna to start to pick up some white as well. So right now I'm more brown than I am black, but I am making sure that I blend them in really nice and naturally. And in a second, let me just make sure that I've got this nice and blended. I am using a good amount of paint on my brush so it can almost 
I can keep moving it as it's drying. That's kind of my big trick when I'm doing these gradients is to keep moving the paint as it's drying. Right now I'm gonna pick up a bit of white on my brush and black and brown. So I have all three colors on my brush right now. And this is gonna start my, my visual gradient going down towards the lighter area. And you can have this as light or as dark as you want. You just want the bottom portion where it's going to meet the uh, bottom edge of your canvas to be the lightest. Your paint will get a little bit darker as it dries as well. So just know that as you're doing this, it will get a little bit darker as, as it dries. So if it's not, um, if it's a little bit too light for you right now, don't worry, it will get a little bit darker. And you can certainly adjust that tonal value as you go. If you think you need it a little bit lighter or a little bit darker, you just adjust the black and the brown and the white to have more or less. And if you don't get a perfect gradient on this one step, you can certainly let it dry and go in for a second coat on it. Sometimes a second coat will help to make it more smooth looking. So doing it on the fly like I am here sometimes can be a bit challenging to get those, those sections to blend in with one another when you're starting to transition into the lighter colors. So if you don't get it as smooth as you had hoped it would be, you can certainly just let it dry for a minute and then go in for a second layer once, once it dries. And I'm just continuing to get it lighter and lighter as I come down with more white on my brush. And now that I've got it all on there, what I'm really gonna do is while my paint is still drying, I'm just gonna kind of keep continuing to go back and forth. If your paint is wet enough, and you want it to uh, blend even more, you can almost go in a diagonal type motion with the paint as it's drying. I have a bristle on my canvas, there you go, like this as it's drying, and then we go back into that original motion. And I just keep moving it until I feel like I've got a beautiful gradient. If your paint isn't as fluid as mine, you could certainly add a little bit of um, liquid medium to get it a little bit more fluid. I am using a student grade paint that is much thinner. It's a very thin body paint, so it allows me to keep it it stays moist pretty long, so I can continue to manipulate it as it's drying. And once you've got your gradient all nice and perfect, we are going to be using our chalk for the next step. So again, once you've got this as gradated or as blended as you would like, you can put your large brush away, take out your piece of chalk and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are drawing an outline for our mask. I am going to be using my chalk. I do wanna just kind of forewarn you that you wanna have your canvas dry as well before you start this step. So, you know, you could either take an extra long break if you like to, or you could blow on it or fan it, um, or you could just do what I did and I took a blow dryer and blow dried it. That was my fastest way to do it. But maybe yours is already dry by now. Um, it just makes it much easier to draw on when it's dry. So I'm using a piece of chalk so it's easy for you to see. Chalk is also very easy to um, correct Make if you make a mistake or re you wanna reshape it. Chalk is very easy to erase, but you could certainly use any writing utensil that you would like to. I'm gonna give you a couple of markers that you can um, follow along with. These masks can really come in a whole variety assortment of shapes um, and styles. I'm just doing one that is very representational for me um, for these beautiful Mardi Gras slash Venetian style masks that they wear. So I'm gonna come over onto the right hand side of my canvas and I'm gonna come away from the canvas, maybe about a half of an inch, and I'm a little bit below my halfway mark. So I would say if this is about my halfway-ish mark, I'm maybe about an inch below that, and I'm gonna give myself a little bit of a marker right in through there. And then I'm gonna come over from there to the center of my canvas, 
and I'm going to make myself two more dots that are about a third of the way down and a third of the way up, give or take a half of an inch or so. They don't have to be perfect um, in, in spacing, but that'll give you a good kind of balance. This is going to represent the arch where the um, nose part goes. This is going to represent the top of the mask, and this is going to represent the little um, tip of the map, the edge of the mask. So I'm going to start with my nose area. I want this mask to look like it's turned to the side. So I'm going to be doing it. My mask is going to be a little bit higher on the left hand side, the bottom part of it than this. It's going to kind of travel down at a little bit of an angle down my canvas in through here. So I'm going to start with the top part of a circle or a crescent of sorts. So something like that. And I'm going to make that right hand side go down just a little bit further. Once I've got that established, I'm going to connect here to here with a long kind of swooping type motion. You can start here or here, wherever it works for you. It's almost going to be on the flatter side in through here. And as I get right about to the, I would say, quarter way mark from here to, you know, around here, that's where I'm going to start to curve it up in through here and maybe something like that. And then on the um, top portion in through here, this is going to represent the top of my mask. So I'm going to bring this down in through here past where this is. So it's going to drop down a little bit lower and then back up. So I'm going to go over in through here, drop it down. That might have dropped down a little bit too quickly. Something like this and then kind of back up like that. And this you can just erase with a little bit of water or with your finger, <laughs> whatever works for you. And now I've got to connect here to here. So this is going to be the left hand side of the mask. It's going to dip in a little bit where the eye is and it's not going to have this area here. So we're just going to be seeing a portion of the mask. So I'm going to bring this in through here. I want this to be a little bit higher than this. I'm going to come up in through here right about, I would say halfway between here and here, or maybe a little bit lower than halfway is where you dip it in a little bit and then you can just bring it back out. Think of this as like the forehead part where the, um, where the eye is gonna be. And then think of this as kind of like the little bit of a cheek type part. And then I'm going to do two eye holes. So this is where my bridge of my nose is gonna go. So if my bridge of my nose is in through here, I want an eye over here. I'm going to do the right eye first. This is going to be of a um, complementary shape to the mask for me. You could have yours just round. You could have yours in a teardrop type shape. You could have it just in a little bit of a slit. You could really have it in whatever kind of shape that you want. And then the bridge of my nose is going to go here. So on the left side of the nose, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself a line. So this will help me to know that that's the bridge of the nose. And I'm only going to see a portion of the eye on this side. So I wanted to like this little dip part would be hidden behind the nose. So I'm just going to kind of go like this, give it the same type of height, maybe a, a you know, a little bit shy of it, but, or maybe just exactly as it is, and then just bring it to the edge. So that's going to be that. And of course you can readjust it to make sure that they look properly proportioned. This one might need to go a little bit bigger, but you can tweak it however you feel fit. Now I'm going to add the top pieces of my, um, of my mask. So I'm going for the jester type um, joker kind of hat. So I'm going to make myself a couple of dots along the edges to get my pieces of fabric that are coming out the hat or the mask to meet them. So on the right hand side, I'm going to go about halfway between the top and where I have here, make myself a marker and then go about an inch above that, make myself another marker. I'm going to come at the top of my um, canvas, come in from the right hand side about an inch, make myself a little bit of a marker. Then I'm going to kind of float a little bit differently so you can get these properly placed. So if you go directly up from your nose, so up, up, up from your nose, you can make a mark right in through there. 
Then just go maybe about a half of an inch to the right, make yourself another mark. And you can go about, I would say, two inches, make yourself another mark. Another like inch and a half, make yourself another mark. These will all make sense in a minute, but this gives you a good place to start. And then I'm gonna make another one over here, maybe about three inches away. I've got it past my face. So if you go just a little bit past your face and go straight up, that'll be a great place for that one, somewhere in through there. And then I have another one kind of floating over in through here. So I'm maybe about two inches in from the left-hand side and about three inches down. So there's that marker. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine markers. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make um, a couple of marks on the, the mask and then we'll connect them all. So if you go straight up from your nose and come over to the left, maybe about an inch, make yourself a mark. Then come about another inch, make yourself another mark. Then go about halfway into this eye, go straight up, make a mark. And then you're gonna go about halfway between here and here, make yourself a mark. Now we're gonna connect all of our dots. <laughs> so we're, I'm gonna take this one and connect it to the bottom right one here with a little bit of an arcing motion. I'm gonna take this one and I'm going to connect it to my third one from the left here. So one, two, three. And it's gonna have a little bit of a curve type motion. I'm gonna to go to this next one here and this next one here and connect those two with a similar type motion like that. I'm gonna go about a third of the way up this one here, make myself a mark and connect that mark to here with a little bit of a curve, something like that. I'm gonna go about halfway between here and here, make myself a mark and connect it to this mark right here, like that. I'm gonna come down here about an inch, make myself a mark and connect it to this one and through here. Now I'm gonna come up, well actually, let's connect this dot to this one. This is a long, wavy, kind of fun line in through here. I'm gonna come up here. I would say somewhere that looks like it belong, like it's a similar spot to this one, so you could even just come directly over to the left from here. This is gonna connect to this dot over here in a similar wave that you just did. So a similar wave, something like this. And then I'm gonna come up in through here, maybe about, I don't know, an inch or two. Connect that to here with a little bit of a wave. And then I'm gonna come down this one, maybe about an inch, or somewhere that looks like it belongs to here. So you could even just kind of diagonally go, something like that. And that's all we're gonna do for our outline. You can put your pen or your chalk away. We're gonna use our medium brush for the next step so you can just get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are doing the base coat on our, uh, the face part of the mask. I'm gonna be using my medium brush and I'm gonna be using white and brown paint. So I'm gonna start with white and I'm gonna start with my, what I'm gonna call the highlighted areas which are gonna be the forehead and the bridge of the nose. And then I'm gonna get it to go darker as it fades away. So I've got white on my brush right now, and I'm just gonna go along the edge, and you can bump right into your pencil mark. I'm not gonna use a lot of paint on my brush at this point because I wanna be able to kind of control uh, what it's doing as it's drying. So I am starting with the lighter part on the nose and on the forehead. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to incorporate a little bit of brown into my mixture as I'm going farther away from that bridge of the nose. So right now I'm picking up white and brown and I'm gonna get this to fade in with that brighter area. You might not be able to get this on the on your first attempt you might want to do a couple of layers to it but if you can if you can kind of just work slowly you may even just be able to add layers as 
on this one particular step, which I will probably end up doing. But my, my goal here is to just have this forehead part and the bridge of the nose are gonna be the lightest. And then as I work my way towards the edges of that mask, I'm gonna get them to go darker. So just think of it as, as if the, these areas over here are more in the shadows and then the bridge of the nose and maybe even a little bit on the cheek are a little bit more in the, um, in the light. They have contours to them, so they're gonna be poking out a little bit more. I picked up more brown, obviously, on this right-hand side. And you can use a, a couple of different brush strokes. I'm kind of just moving my brush almost in a circular fashion to get these colors to blend in with one another as they're drying. You could just go left to right if you want to, whatever brush stroke is the most comfortable for you, but you want it to look like it is one color's kind of fading into the next. So you might find yourself ending up doing a couple of, like I just picked up more white to make sure that this area is blended in with, with here. Another approach that you could take is just doing the entire area in one solid color, letting it dry, and then coming back and doing these darker areas versus the lighter areas. So whatever process works works best for you. There'd be a little bit of darkness as it comes in through um, on, the, on the inside of this nose. So I'm just gonna get this to go a little bit darker in through here. And again, your everything will um, be reshapen as we, as we go through the painting process. So I'm going right up to my um, edge of my chalk for my eyes and if I need to reshape it when I get to those, to doing the colors on them, great. But I might get away with just leaving it as is and that's looking pretty good to me. I want this to kind of um, make sure that it blends in just a little bit more with that nose. So I just picked up a little bit more white on my brush and I'm getting, I'm, I'm thinking of, an, of a face. So it's gonna poke out a little bit more where that nose is, it's gonna poke out a little bit more where the forehead is. It might actually have a little bit more lightness where that cheek is. So you can really just kind of manipulate the value of these colors, which is going to provide the contours on that particular shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit more darker on this left-hand side because this is gonna be shadowed by that nose a little bit and it's gonna dip in kind of like it does on that side. So I'm bringing this pretty dark in through here and then I'll get it to go just a little bit lighter as it goes down towards the bottom part of this section of the mask. So something like this. And I'm going right, again, right up to the edge of my, of my uh, chalk. And I'm just gonna try and make sure that I have a nice rounded edge to that nose in through there. So I keep alternating my brown and my white just to make sure that I have whatever intensity that I need on my brush for that moment. And your, your mask might reshape a little bit throughout this process, but you wanna make sure that you have a nice good coverage. So if you have to go back into certain sections, just to add a little bit more like I just did here on the forehead, feel free to do so. And then we're gonna utilize the same brush for the next step. So once you've got your mask on here, you can, and of course you can keep tweaking it as much as you want to, but once you've got your mask on here, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting the base coat or the first layer of the hat portion of the mask. So I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are purple, yellow, and green. And I do wanna just kind of forewarn you that these colors, at least my uh, the colors I'm using, are very transparent. So they're gonna to appear to be pretty bright when they're wet, but as they dry, they're gonna get a little bit darker. So I just want you to plan for that. So you can really start with whatever color that you would like, but I'm gonna start with yellow, and I'm using quite a bit of yellow on my brush. And I'm gonna be coloring in these two sections with a good coverage or a good amount of paint on my brush. I'm gonna bring it all the way to my chalk mark, so I can just kind of paint that chalk 
right into my paint or pull it right into my paint so it kind of disappears on me. And it will probably look pretty streaky at this point especially if your paint is translucent as mine is. So you're gonna end up having some light spots and some dark spots depending on how thick or thin your paint is. And then I'm just gonna skip right over here to this other yellow section. And again, I'm using a good amount of paint just to make sure that I've got good coverage in through here. I'm bringing it right up to those chalk lines. And then once I get my yellow section done, I will wash my brush and to before I go on to the next color. So I am going to, looks like I've got pretty good coverage on there. And again, I know it's gonna look pretty streaky because of the, um, the transparency of the paint, but I'm gonna wash and dry my medium brush. And now I'm going to do my green section. So I'm doing the left and the right section with green. And again, I'm using a good amount of paint just so I can get some good coverage on in through here, bringing it all the way to my chalk marks. And chalk will definitely just almost disappear. There's other types of pencil um, or drawing utensils that can do that as well. Pencil, um, pencil itself, like there's white pencil, there's watercolor pencils, there's your traditional lead pencils, um, there's charcoal pencils, there's all different kinds. So uh, as you learn to paint or as you um, are kind of experimenting with different things to draw with, if you're doing um, these type of paintings where you want some basic um, sketching in in the beginning you'll find that you'll you'll have your favorite tools to use but I definitely like chalk um, for its ease when when you are um, doing something like this it will just kind of disappear right into your paint and it provides for a very simple way to um, make corrections if you need to. I'm going right to the edge of this tip. You can even pull it down a little bit further if you want to. And if, you, if your chalk is too wide for you, let's say it's outside, you wanna reshape that particular shape, you can certainly leave some of that chalk visible and then you can um, just erase it with water when you, if, if you have any marks that are left that you didn't want to cover. And then once I get done my green section, bringing it all the way to the edge of my mask, I will wash my brush for my purple color. And I, again, I'm just making sure I have a nice even coverage. I'm not doing any special brush stroke in this particular step, just making sure I've got enough paint on there. And then I'm just gonna wash and dry my brush give it a good squeeze in my paper towel, make sure I don't have too much water on it. And then I'm gonna do this center section with purple. And then we are gonna be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this first layer of your, we're gonna call it the hat portion of your mask on, you can just wash and dry this medium brush, almost here, just making sure I've got Nice good coverage throughout the whole thing. I'm using a good amount of paint, making sure I get all the way to the edge. It looks like I have a little spot that I might wanna hit with yellow in a second, but just getting this all the way right close to the mask. And if you bump into the mask or if you bump into your other sections, don't worry. We've got lots of detail work that we're gonna be doing that's gonna hide any of these little edges. So don't feel the need to make this super perfect at this point because you're gonna have lots of other, other details that will help to um, disguise any areas that might not have come out as perfect as you would want. And then again, we'll use the same brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're putting the shadow underneath the mask on whatever surface it's on. I'm gonna be using my medium brush and the colors that I'm using are black and brown. A shadow is meant to be a version of whatever it sits on only a little bit darker. 
So if your background is really, really dark, you can certainly get away with totally black. But if your surface is a little bit on the lighter side, you might want to use a little bit of brown as well. So I'm going to start with just brown and black on my brush. And I'm not using very much paint at all because I don't have a very big area to go. And I want to make sure that I can kind of control um, what's happening. So I'm having my light source over on the left hand side. So my shadows are going to be underneath my mask and to the right. So I'm going to start right here in the nose area and I've got black and brown on my brush. I'm going to just bring this all the way up and this is a great time to clean up your any edges that you might that you might have. I'm going to have my shadow is going to travel underneath this little edge here, but I also want it to travel underneath this a little bit just to make sure it has that really three-dimensional look to it. So I'm just bringing my shadow down to this little edge in through here and I'm going to pull it out just a little bit. So maybe my light source is maybe up and to the left a little bit and that'll indicate that there's maybe a little part of this mask that tips up a little bit here on the edge. And then I'm going to, I got a little bit extra in through here. Let me just put, take a little bit of water. I can push that back with a little bit of water. There we go. And then I'm going to bring it down underneath this edge here. So again, just black and brown are on my brush. This one's going to be a pretty close shadow in through here. So I'm just really going to underline this section of the mask in through here. And then as soon as I get to the area where I feel like it's rolling up a little bit, that's where I'm going to I'm going to pull this shadow out a little bit further, give it a bit of a curve. And then I want it to represent this corner up here. So I'm going to have it traveling out to like a point. So I've got black and brown. I'm going to come up in through here. This whole section is going to be a shadow that's going to come to this point that I'm going to create. So it gives the illusion that it is the point of the the corner of the mask that this is in fact a shadow of. And again, if you want to go all black, great. If brown and black works for you, that's totally fine. I'm just making it nice and dark right where it meets that mask in through here. And this is also a great opportunity or time if you felt that you wanted a little bit of um, darkness inside those eye sockets, you could certainly do that. I think that mine's pretty good, but I feel like I've got a little a little bit of chalk messiness in through there. So I might I might tackle that right now as like a, a shadow type um, effect as well. So again, just a little bit of black and brown. I don't want it to go too much darker than the surface itself, but I definitely want to make sure that these eye socket areas are nice and have a lot of drama to them. So I'm going to make sure that I pull this out as far as I feel it should be. I think we would just see a little bit of the edge of the mask over here. The, the corner I'm thinking is around the corner. <laughs> so I'm just going to have like a little sliver of something in through there and just making sure that it is nice and covered, colored in and I've got as much darkness as I want to. And you could even just accomplish this with a little bit of water and black on your brush or water and black and brown just to make sure you've got uh, any um, chalk marks away or you've got enough um, darkness in through that area that you want. And then we're going to switch to our small brush for the next step. So once you've got your shadow underneath your mask and you've got the inside of your eyes executed as well as you'd like them to be, you can put this medium brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to do the first layer of our beads that are just kind of strewed about the um, the table or whatever surface that the mask is laying on. So I'm going to be using the same colors that I did up top. I'm going to be using my small brush. You can have more strands of beads than I have. You can have yours maybe just have a couple of beads that aren't attached to anything. 
have fun with it. There's no, there's no rules to this. So I'm going to start with purple paint is going to be my starting color. And what I'm going to do, I want my beads to really have some dimension to them. So I want them to be, um, as if they're going behind the mask and they're going to get bigger and bigger as they come towards me. But what I'm first going to do is just draw myself a line of where I want the um, strand of beads to go. So I'm going to start in through here and I'm not going to make it too thick, so to speak, up in the background area. And I want it to have a lot of movement. So I'm just going to kind of bring this in through here. I'm going to have it wrapping around really close to my um, exterior of my canvas. I'm going to have it coming down in through here. Maybe I'll have it up in through here. So I'm just really kind of giving myself a little bit of a roadmap where I want this strand of beads to go. And then maybe I'll have it kind of curving around like this. So now that I've got my idea of what I want, then I'm going to make my biggest beads, the ones that are going to be closest to me. So I feel that the ones over here would be closest to me. So I'm going to just make these, these circles are probably about an inch tall and an inch wide. And then I'm making them right next to each other. I'm using a lot of paint on my brush. So I have a nice thick coverage, even though I know I'm going to be doing another layer on them that's going to add highlights and shadows to them. I still want to have a good coverage to this first coverage. And I'm making my beads a little bit smaller as they're going towards here. I'm not going to make them be as small as I'm going to do the upper ones, but I'm just doing a circular motion with my brush stroke with the tip of my brush stroke. And I'm going pretty fast, which kind of allows me to not think too hard about these. Sometimes when you think too hard about something, uh, you end up not doing exactly as you want because you're, you're concentrating almost a little bit too hard on it. So I just am saying, okay, I want them the biggest over here. And then I made them a little bit smaller going in through there. And then as they go, towards back there, they're going to be the smallest. I'm going to have them even smaller than these ones. So I'm just trying to progressively get them to go a little bit smaller as they come back in through here. And I'm reloading my brush often so that way it really has that good coverage. I'm probably going to, as I'm getting into this back area, I think I'm going to just have these little tiny dots because I want this to be really small back there. And I'm just doing one purple bead, one strand of purple beads, one of green and one of yellow. So I'm going to do my yellow one next. So I'm, I washed and dried my brush. I'm reloading with my yellow paint. I'm going to put my strand of beads where I want. So this one I'm going to have kind of coming out this back side over here. So I'm going to have, and it's going to be really far away over here. So this is just going to be a little tiny, tiny one in through here, maybe goes off of my canvas like that. And then I'm going to have it coming over in through here. This one's going to probably straddle on top of my purple one, but I'm going to give it a little bit of, of movement in through here, something like this. I'm going to just kind of skip over my, or Oops, I just dropped a little bit on my canvas. That's all right. I'm going to do this down in through here. And then I think this is going to come pretty close to, to these ones over here. And maybe I've got the other little edge coming out in through here. And you can cross them over one another. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm going to give this. So that's going to be the direction of it. Let me just get rid of this little smudge of paint that I have here. I'm just taking it off with a bit of water. That's going to go right in that purple one. <laughs> so I like when I make mistakes because you guys can actually see the see the process. I'm just using a little bit of water with a firm brush and that's just kind of scrubbing it away for me before it dries too much and, and away it goes. So now I'm just going to continue to pick up my yellow. My beads are going to be the biggest in through here, but they might not be as big as my purple beads because they're sitting a bit farther um, back. So you can certainly play with the, the closeness of the beads, however you want to do that, totally up to you. And I'm going to make them go smaller and smaller as they go back. 
And then this one is going to go really, really small in through here. So these are just going to be these little tiny dots that are right next to each other. And when I reload my brush for these smaller ones, I like to spin my brush in my, on the, in my paint on the side of my palette. That helps me to repoint my brush. That's just a little, little trick of my trade. And then I'm just going to continue to make these ones smaller and smaller as they go back. And then the little ones over here are just little dots. So my actual initial line probably would have been good enough, but I want to give it a little bit more dimension. So I'm adding these little, little dots of similar size. And then I'm going to go ahead and do my green strand. So I'm washing and drying my small brush and I'm going to use just green paint. So I'm going to figure out where I want that to go. I want one coming out on this back side over here. So I'm going to do this one maybe is going to come something like this. And then I'm going to have one. This one's going to be fun. I'm going to have this one kind of going on top of these ones. So I'm just giving it a little bit of a trail so I can I can follow along. It's going to go on top of this one too. And then for me, making them go on top of each other just helps to add to the illusion, the three-dimensional illusion that I really like to create in my paintings. So I've got this coming in through here and then maybe this one comes over here. And again, right now I'm just kind of drawing myself a road map where I want my beads to go. And I think this one I'm gonna have going here and maybe trailing off in through here. So my biggest ones are gonna be down here. So I'm gonna have a really huge one and it could be theoretically larger than that one. So just green paint on my brush is where I'm going right now. Just a really big circle and it's a partial one. It kind of goes off of the canvas and then I'm gonna progressively get smaller and smaller with my circles. I want, um, the ones that when they meet here to be similar size that would make sense if it's a same kind of beads i do know though that beads come in all different sizes <laughs> so you could certainly have yours of a different shape and i'm going right through my wet purple i'm okay with that i i'm just kind of blending it right in with my green i just want that illusion to happen so if i go on top um, and it's still wet. I'm okay with that. So I've got that one and that one You know if if it didn't work out for you, you could certainly just um, Dry your paint if it's a little frustrating with it being wet for you But I like to just kind of let it happen and I'm going smaller and smaller and I'm watching these other beads to again make up make these green ones of similar size, but if it doesn't work out perfectly that's all right, because we're gonna be adding highlights and shadows and, and all kinds of other details that will take the eye, the viewer's eye, away from any imperfections that might have happened during this process. And I'm, again, I'm having this green one go right on top of the other ones. And then I'm gonna do my little um, beads down here. I think these ones are gonna be a little bit bigger because I want these ones to look a little closer. And then we are going to be using our, let's see, we're going to use our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this first layer of the beads, you can wash and dry your medium brush and you can just get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we are doing the second layer to the hat portion. So I'm gonna use my medium brush and I'm gonna use the same colors that I started with which are yellow, purple, and green, but I will also be using white and brown as well. So this time, uh, this is kind of the final layer of these, um, of this portion. So I'm, I wanna, in essence, kind of add highlights and shadows and have it have a full coat on it so it doesn't look streaky like this. So. I'm thinking of this as fabric that has um, almost like those wires in the edges so it, it can be bendable. So it's going to have um, varying movement to it. You might have one part that's buckling out more than the other, but I am going to kind of in my head, I know my light source is over here. So I'm going to have like little highlights in strategic places so it 
makes it look like the light is coming from the left hand side. So I'm going to start with these two sections here. I'm going to start with brown and yellow on my brush. That's going to be in essence kind of my shadowy color and I'm going to put a little bit of that in through here as if this might be casting a little bit of a shadow in through this area and then as I go up towards the top right I'm going to be picking up yellow and white. So I've got, I didn't wash my brush, I just picked up a little bit of yellow and now I've got a little bit of white and I want it to in essence kind of go a little lighter up in the top right hand corner and I can just get, I'm doing this second layer on here to get them to just kind of blend. I've got a, a nice coverage on the whole area. You can, if you need to, go back into the brown and the yellow just to get those sections to blend in together. But for me, I just kind of went from dark down in this bottom left to lighter up in the top right. And you might need another, co another coat if you don't feel that you've got enough coverage on it. We're going to be putting little sparkle dots on in a little bit as well, so that will help to... Um, get the the blending process but we're not really going for photorealism here we're just going for a ripply piece of fabric and an interpretation of this fun hat so that's looking pretty good to me and then I'm going to move on to this one with just uh, yellow and brown on my brush and I'm going to put a little bit of that darker area down in through here I went into my other section a little bit, but that's okay. It's all right at this point if you don't color within the lines. If you get it outside the lines a little bit, that is totally fine. Because we, again, we've got, we've got other stuff that's going to help alleviate that, those little marks. And then I've got my darker section in. Now I'm just picking up a little bit of yellow and white to get this lighter area up at the top. And then I just want to get them to blend in with each other. And I'm just using kind of the side of my brush in a little bit of a um, circular type motion to get them to blend in together. That is my kind of go-to paint stroke as I, as when I am blending. So you might find that you have a little bit different of a technique that works better for you, but this is, this is what works for me. So I just kind of keep adding those little bits of layers until I feel like it's blended enough. I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm going to go into my green sections. So wash and dry my brush and for my green I already naturally have a really great shadow in through here but I want my paint to be wet and I want to be able to blend it so I'm starting with green on my brush and I'm in essence just going to kind of re-wet in through here make sure I have a good coverage because you might find that there's little streakiness or you can see some of um, maybe your chalk didn't blend totally into it as much as you want it to. So now that I've got that area kind of wet, I want up here and this top right to be a little bit lighter. So I'm adding green and white to my brush. And you're going to see with this fallow green that a tiny bit of white paint definitely brings out the vibrancy in that um, in that paint. So if you feel like you've done too much of the white, just either wash your brush or wipe it off on your paper towel, pick up more of the green, and you can ad adjust the intensity as much as you want. I want this to look like it's kind of rounded, so you can certainly play with the visual effect by doing almost a curved paint stroke when you're putting this highlight on that will help to um, steer the viewer to know that it is in fact a, a rounded object and I'm just getting this to blend in as much as I want to before I move on to the next one and sometimes when I'm blending I'm not pressing my brush hard I'm almost just hardly touching the canvas that helps me to um, not over blend or not move the paint too much so you, you tend to um, find your rhythm after a while. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing over here. So if my light is coming from the left, I might have a little bit of a highlight in through here um, from it catching the, the light. So I think I'm going to just make sure I have enough paint in through here. So I just have green on my brush right now, making sure that I've got good coverage. And I'm going to add just a teeny tiny bit of white on my brush to add a little bit of a highlight in through here. Maybe I've got a little bit over in through here. 
So I'm not going to do much with this one. I almost want this one to look like it's maybe bent over at us. Um, so I'm not going to bring this one too bright, but I want you to definitely be, the viewer to definitely be able to see that it is in fact green and it hasn't been hidden in my, in my background. I might add a tiny bit more of my white paint in through here. Yeah, there we go. Just a little bit, just a little dab will do you when it comes to that. And then I'm gonna wash and dry my brush to do the purple section. So I just wanna make sure that I've got enough of this, this highlighted area for me to, to be happy with. And I'm gonna just move my brush a little bit in the curve of that piece of fabric. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. And washing and drying my brush, moving on to the purple one. So for me on the purple one, I feel like it would be bumped out the most in through here to almost tell the story of the light source being over there, but also the form of the head. So I'm going to start with purple. The purple is going to go up top. Make sure I have a good coverage with that purple. And then I'm going to, as I come down, in through here. You could, I suppose, add a little bit of brown too if you wanted this purple area to be a bit more dark, if you wanted it to have a little bit more shadow to it, but I think I'm going to get away with just using the purple. And then in through here, that's when I'm going to use purple with a teeny bit of white on my brush, and that's going to give me that highlighted area in through, in through here. And I feel like I have too much paint on my brush, so I'm wiping it off on my paper towel. And I'm going to pick up just purple to make sure that these that I don't go too light in through this section. So I'm just making sure I still have enough of the dimension from the original purple along here. And then I'll get this bright spot to just kind of blend in with the neighboring colors. So I'm using my my paper towel as my as my helper right now to make sure that I don't get this to go too, too light. And if you do make it go too light, you can always just wait a, a few minutes, wait for it to dry, because again, it's gonna dry a little bit darker, and then you can adjust it with that original purple. And then I'm just gonna come up here with some more of that original purple, just make sure that it blends. And then we are going to be using our small brush for the next step. So once you've got, yeah, that's looking good. Once you've got this all nice and finished, you can put your medium brush away. We just get this to blend in just a smudge more. Put your medium brush away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are doing the border of the mask. So I'm gonna be using my small brush, and I'm gonna be using yellow and white paint. And this is just kind of a decorative border. Um, I'm going to be just doing it in a light yellow color and it's going to add to all of the um, final decoration details that we'll put on later. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make myself a light yellow color. So I'm adding, I'm taking white and I'm adding just a little bit of yellow in it. I don't want this color to fight with this color up and through here, but I definitely want it to have some yellow in it. So later when we, when we add the final details onto all of these decorations, it will have a little bit of substance to, for us to do a highlight and a shadow around it. So this is kind of where I'm going with my colors, just a light, light yellow color. And what I'm gonna do is I am adding this in a lot of places. <laughs> so I'm gonna add it around my eyes. So this is going to help you, again, kind of clean up any little edges that you may um, feel that you want to clean up. You could, I suppose, add a little bit of brown to this color too, if you want it to look more on like the golden side of like a metallic gold kind of color, you could certainly add a little bit of brown into it. And it doesn't have to be exactly the same color all the way through. So if you have some light spots and some dark spots, just because you have have more paint on your brush or less paint on your brush, that's quite all right. On this side over here, you, I'm not putting it where the bridge of the nose is because you wouldn't, I wouldn't have it there. I'm just putting it 
over in through here and then along this bottom edge in through here. I'm kind of straddling the inside part as well as the mask so that way if I have any um, lines that need to be cleaned up a bit that this will help me to do that. I'm going to do along the edge of my my mask, the bottom part of it, so somewhere something like this. And I kind of um, trail it off as I go towards the exterior edges, but again, this is this is a painterly decorative element. So whatever you choose to do with yours, maybe you choose to do yours in a different color, maybe you choose to do yours, you know, in other places than, than I have mine. I just kind of let that trail off into the um, other color. Up in through here, I'm going to do it along the top edge of the mask, something like that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do it along. I'm just consciously watching, trying to um, avoid getting my pinky in any other wet paint. I have a shaky hand if you haven't watched me before and, and heard, heard that that happens to me. So I am always bracing myself on my canvas with my, with my pinky or you know something along that line. So I have to be very aware of any wet paint that is surrounding my, my canvas. I just added a touch of brown to this color combination. Um, and I did that so it looks like it gets a little bit darker off in this corner in through here. So if you want it to really have that dimensional element, you could certainly add a little bit of brown in through there as well. And then I'm going to do the same little border to all of my pieces of fabric. So again, I'm not really terribly concerned about these being a, a perfect line as in straight because these are pieces of fabric. I guess I probably should have started over on the left hand side to avoid my hand going in any areas, but um, I am just utilizing this step to really clean up my edges too. So you can use it for that, that purpose alone or you can you know certainly use it as a beautiful decorative element. We're going to be adding some additional details to it in a little bit. I'm just kind of mixing myself a bit more here on the fly. And again, yours can be any any shade you want. Maybe some of it's lighter than others. Maybe some of it's darker than others. I definitely want this one in through the um, yellow areas to be lighter than, than that original color. So just going ahead and adding that in through there. And I'm doing it on all of these pieces on the the top part, the hat part as well, because it's going to add that um, kind of a finished look like the the mask has those finished fabric edges to it all, over, all around. It kind of ties all of the, the design elements together. If you can take one of these aspects and carry it throughout the painting, even if it's just one similar color, and carry it throughout the painting, that's going to really add a lot of harmony to your painting and, and make it really balanced and, and look like it all belongs together. So again, I just kind of keep reloading my brush, adding these, these elements over here, and I am almost got this done. I'm going to have a little dangly thing over here in a minute, but um, before I get done this step. So this is, we're calling this the border, right? Um, so I guess I can do the other little elements with this color on the next step. So we're going to use this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your border done, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are doing the base coat for the decorations on the mask. So I'm gonna have a little dangly thing here. I'll have a scrolly thing on the forehead portion. I'll have some dots and scrolly decorations around the eyes and some dots over on the right hand side too. You can have whatever kind of formation of decorations you want. There's all kinds of graphic 
triangles and like lines and dots and swirls really it, leave it up to your creative brain to create something if you want to steer away from mine. But how I'm going to start is I'm going to start with my lighter decorations, which is going to be with that light yellow color that I had on the last step. So I'm going to be doing a decorative element above the nose. So somewhere in through here, I'm really just going to be doing a circle. And of course, I wanted to have a little bit of perspective that the left hand side is a little bit farther away than the right hand side. So I'm going to take this and then I'm going to do a little scrolly scroll thing, something like that. And then when I go to do it on the left hand side, I'm going to have it a little bit smaller as if it's going farther away from us. So like this, and then you might just see a little piece of it like that. And then I'm going to do a dangly like um, metallic ball coming off of here. So I've got a little, just a string, I guess. <laughs> and then a little dangly, mine's going to be a little like an oval type shape. And I'm just using that um, pale yellow color for now. We'll add our highlight and our shadow to it later. So that's all I'm doing for that. Um, then I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to be using purple on my brush to add some decorative elements around the eye. So I think I'm going to have this coming in through here. And again, I'm just using purple to start. I'll be using um, highlights and shadows in a, in a bit, but right now I'm just using my purple as my base color. So I'm going to try and keep both sides of the face symmetrical, but again, one side is much farther away than the other. So on here, I probably only see a little portion of this, of this scrolly part coming out. So I'm going to just do like this, and maybe it's just a little bit smaller like that. And then I'm going to do uh, another purple line coming underneath this eye like this, and it's going to travel down the cheek, and I'm going to have another pretty scrolly mark in through here. I'm using a good amount of paint on my brush right now just so I can have a nice solid base for this um, main coat. And again, I know that my paint is pretty darn see-through, so I it behooves me to use a good amount on my brush. And then I'm going to do a similar mark over here, but again, I know that this is kind of hidden over here and it's about mid eye or not farther not to, it's hard to do an opposite scroll like this so bear with me i have to concentrate here for a second and actually think about what i'm doing i'm watching this but as long as i get it you know close in um in shape i guess i'm doing all right i need to come pretty pretty close to the bottom of the the mask portion in through here and then just kind of scroll it up. But I know, it would again, it would be skewed because it is at a different angle and we're just seeing a little bit of it. I think that's pretty good. And then I gotta do just a teeny tiny bit up at the top just to represent what I did over on that eye. So I'm gonna do just a little smudge of the purple up in through here, make sure I carry it into about the same distance. And then I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I'm going to put some green dots in a little scrolly mark for my green too. So just green paint on my brush. I'm going to, oh, I think I want a dot inside there too. I'll do that in a minute. Um, let's see, I'm going to do a scrolly mark underneath here. So this one's going to be, I don't know, something like this. And you you might want yours to be way different than mine. Again, just use whatever kind of marks are coming naturally to you. There is no rules to this. I don't even know if I've ever seen two masks that are exactly alike. They just come in so such a huge variety. And you could do yours more. Um, th this is meant to represent um, Mardi Gras in New Orleans which is one of my sister's favorite places to go, but there's also these style masks, in, Venetian masks in Venice. And oh my God, the, theirs are definitely 
really ornate. They've got gems all over them. They've got feathers. They've got so many decorative elements. They have masquerades that they go to with these beautiful masks on. So you can really utilize your creative energy to get these to be in whatever um, formation you want. I'm going to do some some decorative dots on, on the above the the eyes. So again, I'm just using green right now. You can have yours be, you know, purple. You can have any any color that you want. I'm gonna just try and get these on the right hand side to be similar on the left hand side. So I started right about the end of that purple mark. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. Again, I have a good amount of paint on my brush right now so I can really control um, the intensity or the size of these dots in a uniform kind of way, but maybe you want yours to be a little bit more carefree than mine. Um, but definitely having a lot of paint on my brush is helping me to get them into the size that I want. These ones are going to be a little bit bigger. Your, maybe yours aren't as uniform as mine. Again, you can have fun with creating them whatever way you want. And again, I'm going to try and do something similar on this side just to represent that each side is um, pretty similar to one another. And then I'm going to go ahead and do some pretty ones over here on the end of this one. And again, as big or as small as you want, we're going to we're going to give them some some dimension in a little bit. But once you've got this step done, we are going to be utilizing this same brush for the next step. I think I just want a couple more in through here, bringing it just past that, that mark. Yeah, that looks good. All right, so I'm gonna wash and dry this small brush, get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're adding our shiny glitter dots to the fabric on our hat. So I'm gonna be using my small brush. I'm gonna be using yellow, green, and purple, and white, and brown. So how I'm gonna do this is on each section, I'm gonna add lighter and darker dots than what I see. So in here, I would add some lighter dots throughout it, that's gonna add the, the brighter metallic sparkles, and then the darker dots as well will add that dimensional, I don't know if it's dimensional, but a, a shiny kind of element to it. So I'm gonna start with the yellow one so you can kind of see how that goes. So you could utilize just this yellow if you wanted to, your light yellow that you have, or you can make yourself a different kind of custom yellow, but I'm just gonna utilize the light yellow that I have here, and I'm just going to add I don't need a ton. I'm just gonna add a few strategically placed ones. I don't wanna go crazy with it because I just want it to look like it's sequence. I think, oh, I think that's the right word, sequence. Um, so I'm just kind of adding, and they don't even have to be perfect dots because they could be catching the light in a weird way. So I've got those as my lighter dots in my yellow section. I feel like I want another one there. And now I'm gonna, for my yellow, my dark color is gonna just be brown. So I can utilize brown as my dark color. And you can put them anywhere you want because they can be catching the light in a, in a weird way, in a, you know, I'm not putting a thousand, I'm just gonna put enough that are gonna give the viewer the idea that there's a couple of little, um, sequins or sparkly things that are catching the light. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna go ahead and go onto my purple section. So my lighter dots are gonna be a light version of purple. So I'm just adding purple with a little bit of white into it. So that's gonna be my light version. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a couple of the lighter dots in through here and maybe a couple down, whoops, those aren't light enough. I need to make sure you can actually see them. There's no purpose in having them if you can't see them. So there's a couple down there. And now, well, maybe, maybe one over there too. Now I'm going to do a darker version of my purple. So I could guess, I could 
go with just brown and that's where I'm going to start and if that is not dark enough then maybe I go brown and purple. If you can't see it you, you, you want to make sure that you do something to it so you can see it or you could add a little bit of black. So if it's not dark enough, you could certainly go purple with a little bit of black. I know I didn't say black in the colors, but I'm, I'm telling you now, you can use black too. So you can certainly add a couple of those darker dots and that's going to give you the information that there's some, there's some sparkle to these, to these little pieces of um, fabric that we've got up here. And then I'm going to do the same exercise for the green sections. So in the lighter sections, I could, for my dark color, just use green. And for my lighter color, I'm going to use green and white. So you can utilize the green and white for your, for your lighter color. But you could also get away with using just that dark green in the lighter sections, and that will provide you with enough of a um, contrast in your color to give you that information that it is in fact um, something that's sparkly. As long as you have some light, lighter spots and some darker spots, that's going to tell the story that it is of a, of a metallic kind of nature. I'm going to, um, for my darker area, of course, I'm going to use that just, um, I can start with just green and you can put some little bit lighter areas in the dark section too. So just know you've got anything that shows contrast in these sparkle dots will work. I'm going to go ahead and go over on this side. I've got my lighter green that I'm using for a couple of um, dots in through here. And again, I don't need to do the whole thing consistently. The um, You're, you're going to get a better illusion if you have diversity in it. I've got my dark green on my brush right now and adding some spots in through here. And you just put as many as you feel um, is, is working. This is one of those steps that you can also step back from your painting a little bit, look at it from a distance and see if it provides you with the illusion that you were hoping for. Um, well, that's it. <laughs> I'm like, what else do I need to do on this step? But that's it for my sparkle dots. Uh, we're going to use our small brush for the next step so you can put, just wash and dry your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we are finishing our decorations with all the little details. So the details to me are, are my highlights and my shadows. This is where I get to make everything kind of become three-dimensional and pop out a little bit, add any little threading that I might want on these borders. I'm going to use my small brush. The colors that I'm going to be using are white, black, brown. That might be it. I might use more colors, but I might use a little bit of my yellow too, or my green, or my purple. <laughs> I'll call them out as I'm using them. <laughs> so I'm gonna start up here and I'm gonna finish this area in through here. I'm gonna start with some brown paint. Oops, that had a little white on it. I'm gonna start with some brown paint on my brush and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a shadow on the, on, on the borders and it's gonna be on the side that's opposing the light source. So my light source is to the left so my shadow is going to be to the right. So I have brown on my brush and I want this to look like fabric so I don't want it to be a super clean line. So I'm going to actually just kind of wobble it along the edge like this. So I just wobbled a, a shadow line. I'm going to do that to right here. This one I'm not going to touch because my shadow would be on the other side, which is just the black wall for now. So I'm just using um, brown. You could probably get away with black on this purple section. I might actually use a little black on the green section, but we'll see how I feel when I get to there. I'm going to, on this right hand section of this one, just kind of wobble a line going down here. I'm going to go ahead and do that up and through here. Just wobble a line. You wouldn't see it here because it's over there. I'm going to go ahead and do it underneath this one. And again, when you get into the green, I suppose you could use black and brown if your green is really dark. You might not see it unless you use the um, black with it. So you, 
You can use your best judgment when it comes to that. And then on this one, this one's a little um, wobbly in itself. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do this inside of this one in through here like that. And then I'm going to do a little shadow over on this guy over here. So it's gonna be on the right hand side. So I'm just adding a little bit of shadow and then just kind of pulling it and I'm going to use some of that um, original yellow color on this one just to get that shadow to blend in a little bit. There we go. And if you need a little shadow over there. So that's going to be the shadows on those pieces. Now I'm going to add the little highlight, which is going to be with white and maybe my light yellow color. And this is just going to be a little um, kind of curved dash. I'm just going for it to look a little bit like some kind of stitching along the edge. You might want yours to be um, of a different color. You might want yours to be in a different direction. I'm going to try and um, keep mine in a in in a similar way around it, but I'm switching directions as I go from one piece to the next. So feel free to do the same if you'd like to. It, sometimes that makes it look a little bit more natural, but I'm keeping them in the same direction on that one particular piece. I'm gonna go ahead and do this one. I'm just going for this color to be a little bit lighter than that base color so you can see the, the difference between the two and also knowing that it will dry a little bit darker. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do this one. And if you put it with a little bit of a curve, if you can, that's gonna add a little bit more dimension to it as well. And it can pop out a little bit from that original line that you created. If you can make it pop out a little bit further outside that edge, that will make it look even more three-dimensional. So there's these little tiny tidbits of tricks or tips that can help you to add that illusion just with a little tiny brush stroke. So giving it a curve, getting it to pop out a little bit past that original color, that's going to make it look uh, that much more three-dimensional. So I'm going ahead and finishing these ones up in through here. And you can see I'm just kind of cruising along. I'm not really terribly concerned if everyone is perfect. I'm just making sure that I've got that similar motion on all of them. If I want it to be a little bit lighter or brighter or more on the yellow side, you can certainly adjust that color however you see, you see fit. And again, it doesn't have to be exactly the same on every single one because one might be catching the light a little bit different than the other one. One might have, you know, been sewn on with a different kind of fabric, who knows? You can, but you can certainly, again, use your, your judgment on that. I'm going to, while I've got this light color on my brush, my light yellow and white, I'm gonna add the little bits of highlights on my yellow and white pieces. So I did add this center area off camera <laughs> in between stuff, so if you didn't notice it magically appeared. I knew I wanted to, but I forgot to do it on camera, so I did it off camera. Um, so I'm gonna just add my little bits of highlights in through here, just adding these little streaks of a light color like that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add that on these other yellow areas as well. And these are just intended to be um, highlight kind of accents. I'm going to add a shadow to them in a minute as well. It just provides, again, that, uh, that dimensional element. I'm going to do it on the contour parts where I feel that they would be popping out the most. So I've got yellow and white on my brush and I'm adding it in these areas that I feel would pop out just a little bit more, something like that. Definitely on this bridge of the nose, maybe in through here a bit. And of course you can adjust yours as you see fit. I think I went outside my lines a little bit here. It's a little bit aggressive on that one. And then I'm also going to do the same highlight and shadow thought process on all these little details. So I'm just gonna tackle my shadows really quick, which is gonna be with black and brown on my brush. And they're all gonna kind of get the same type of shadow. So black and brown on my brush. And if you're nervous about the your brush flowing, you can add a tiny bit of water to your brush. 
my light source is top right or top left so my shadow is on the bottom right so again I'm just going to add a bit of darkness on the bottoms of these and on the side something like this and I'm just going along the side of it with my small brush you might want yours to be a little bit more intense or a little bit more subtle whatever you're feeling for how much of the shadow you want some of your pieces could lay flat um, like this line at the top of the mask I think I'm going to leave that one without a shadow because I want that one to just look like it's painted maybe this one I want to look like it's three-dimensional so I can have that one pop out a little bit and maybe I want some of my my dots to look a little three-dimensional so I could add a touch of black underneath those if you anything that you want to pop out and look three-dimensional you can add that shadow to if you want that paint or that that decoration to look three-dimensional just add a little bit of a shadow underneath it and then I'm going to also add a highlight on top of it so I'm doing that with these uh, colors in through here again I'm going on the right hand side and the bottom of them that's going to tell the viewer where the light source is. My green dots seem to be nice and dark enough. I don't think I need to add much there. I'm um, washing and drying my brush just to add the highlights to them. So washing and drying my brush, my uh, highlight on the green is gonna be green and white on my brush at the same time. And again, my highlight is gonna be top left. So if the shadow is the bottom right, the highlight is the top left. So something like this. And this, of course, will only add to the illusion of it, like that, green and white. I'm gonna add a couple of little dots on my green dots on my mask. That's gonna make them look three-dimensional. Yeah, these almost look like little beads themselves on the mask now that I'm putting this little highlight. I didn't put a shadow on these green ones because they already felt like they that green was dark enough for me. So I I opted out of the shadow on those ones. I didn't think I needed it. I'm going to do um, a little sh highlight on these ones just to make sure. And the sh highlight doesn't have to be just white. It can be green and white on your brush. That will still give you the highlight, but it'll make them look like, like these ones over here. I'm making a little bit darker to make them look like they're further away. And, oh, I need my little bit of a highlight on my purple so I can get that purple to stand out. So purple and white is gonna, on my brush at the same time, is gonna be my, my highlight color for my purple. And just make sure I have enough purple on my brush. There we go. And again, this could act as a highlight. It could just act as a second coat to these areas if you feel like you don't necessarily want the dimension but you want to make sure that they have a good second coat this could definitely um, be utilized as that type of step and then we're going to use the same brush for the next step so once you've got all of your beautiful decorations finalized on your oh i need one little highlight here hold the, hold the phone almost done I was looking around as I was as I was getting done and I missed my little highlight on this little golden golden piece hanging from dangling from the the hat so just a little bit of a highlight on there yeah there we go and we're gonna use the same brush for the next step so once you've got your beautiful decorations all nice and complete on your on your hat portion and on the mask portion you can wash and dry your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting the shadows of the beads onto the surface that they're sitting on. So I'm gonna be using my small brush, and again, I'm gonna be using black and brown paint, and you can adjust your intensity based on how light your surface is. The darker it is, the more black you'll wanna use, the lighter it is, the more brown you'll want to use. So I'm going to use black and brown on my brush. I'm going to, my light source is over to the left, but I do want um, you to really see the shape of some of these. So 
again, my shadow like we did everywhere else is gonna be to the bottom and to the right, similar to how we did it on the, on the surface here. But these can be clean shadows. They don't have to be soft, long shadows. So I really just have black and brown on my brush and the, I'm always thinking my light source is over here. So it's gonna cast the shadow that way. So I'm just gonna kind of start over here and I'm gonna go on the right side of these beads in through here. I'm gonna give it kind of the shape of the bead itself like this. And then as it comes around this corner, my light source is over here. So my shadow should be going to the right, but so I don't really need much next to these ones, just something on that right hand side, not on the left hand side. So when I get to the left hand side of this bead, I'm leaving it alone. I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit on the bottom right of these ones. So bottom, I'm always thinking bottom right of where that bead is sitting. So something like this. And again, you, you might not need a whole heck of a lot in some of the areas, but I, I wanna give it something so it definitely shows that there is a light source here. And this is gonna help with that um, dimensional element for the for the beads. So again, bottom right is what I'm doing on these and I'm just kind of cruising along until I get over here because that's where it's going to get a little a little on the goofy side. So as it's turning this corner here, my shadow might creep up and cast a little bit of a shadow on the bead that it's next to. So just know that it it still is on the and on the right hand side. You don't even as you're coming around this corner, you might have a tendency to just stay at the bottom of these, but it's still gonna cast it to the right hand side. So I'm gonna do my purple ones. I'm gonna do each colored bead, set of bead first, one at a time, and that way my brain will kind of stay straight. So as I'm going around this corner, my shadow, there's a bead underneath there that you don't see, is gonna be on the right hand side of that bead. So I'm gonna stay on the right, maybe a little bit below, but on the right hand side, bottom right. Bottom right is what I'm always thinking, bottom right. I don't care what direction the the bead is in, the shadow is going the bottom right of it. <laughs> and that helps me to, if I can just keep that in my head, as I cruise through these, it, it becomes pretty pretty easy if I can just maintain that thought process. So I've got the purple ones done. I'm still just using black and brown on my brush. I think I'm gonna go ahead and do my yellow ones. So bottom right of each bead, just adding a little mark in through here. This one is gonna go on top of these ones. So bottom right is still where that goes. This is gonna be on the, on the surface, so bottom right. And if you want, you can pull them out just a little bit on that surface. That'll just, you know, tell the viewer the, the shape of it a little bit more. There we go. Bottom right. This one's got a little, little over here. And I can start now, I can start on these ones, curving it just a little bit more underneath it. I need to reload my brush a little bit more brown and black. And I'm trying to keep them, you know, conducive to the, the, the size of that particular bead. And if you bump into the bead a little bit, like I have on several occasions, don't worry, because we need to add a highlight to the bead too, and that will help you to um, correct any little bits that might have gone awry on you. And again, when you get to the smaller ones, you don't really need to do a whole heck of a lot. I'm gonna skip over, do that yellow set over there. Black and brown are my colors. And again, bottom right. So these might not have too, too much, but still you want something to, to steer the viewer to understand that these in fact are on the surface as well. So we've got that there. Still just using black and brown. Gonna go ahead and do my green ones in through here. So bottom right. And this one is a pretty tall one, so it might just have a little, 
you know, something around there, bottom right. And I'm using a little bit more brown on this, on these lighter areas, but I'm gonna go more black as I get into those darker areas. So, and this one's probably gonna cast a little shadow on that purple bead, because this is on top of it. This is going in through here. I think I'm gonna pull these a little bit longer. Maybe that will tell the viewer that they're up off the, off the surface a little bit. It's casting a bit more of a shadow because it's on top of that one. And again, I, I know I've said this a couple of times, but you might be viewing this for the viewing my paintings for the first time. You can always take um, if you're if you want to practice shadows, you can set yourself up a a still life um, setting on a table or something, which would just be a couple of objects and with a lamp, you can just steer that lamp around those objects and you can watch what happens with the shadows. Your brain will eventually kind of train itself the more you the more of an exercise that you continue to do with uh, highlights and shadows and what happens, what does that light source, what kind of effect does that light source have on the objects next to it? The more practice you get or the more you just start observing things around you with the with what's happening with the highlights and shadows. Sometimes it gets difficult because you have multiple light sources. You could have two or three lamps on in the same room and they're gonna cast shadows in multiple different directions, which can tend to get a little confusing. But if when you're doing a painting like this, if you want to give yourself um, just one light source, that helps to to make things consistent and a little bit easier as you're going through this process. And then we are going to be using the same brush for the next step. So once you've got your shadows on your beads, you can wash and dry your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the next step, which is finishing the beads. It's gonna be the highlights on the beads. I'm gonna be using my small brush and I'm gonna be using whatever color I used on the beads plus white. So for my purple beads, I'm gonna be using purple and white are gonna be my highlight. And same thing with the light source. My light source is over to the top left, so I can add my highlight to the top left. You can cruise along like I'm doing and just adding these little um, crescent curves. However, you're probably gonna to need to go back and, and blend it in a little bit. So if you don't have full coverage on that particular bead from your original first layer that you did, you'll probably wanna go back and touch it with um, a second layer. Like I just got that highlight on, but I've got some, some areas that are not fully painted, so I'm just wiping my brush, picking up a little bit more purple and making sure that I've got it, one, blended, a little bit and two that I have full coverage on that particular bead. So for me, again, my paint is a little bit more on the see-through side. So coming back with a second layer on the entire bead really helps me to make sure that I have full coverage. My highlight could be um, bright if I, if I wanted to, but I definitely want to make sure that I have full coverage on, on that particular bead. So even if as I'm doing this second layer process, I dole down my highlight a little bit too much, I can always come back and rebrighten that if I want to. But my main objective here is to get the highlight on, but also make sure that I have full coverage on that particular bead itself. So. This one is gonna be extra bright, but we can dull it down a little bit. There we go. A little bit of that original purple. And I don't wanna accidentally cover them all with white either. So I definitely wanna make sure that they maintain that dimensional element, which is the brighter portion, and then that I have a full coverage around it. And you can keep tweaking it until you've got them as bright as you want. And then once you've got one bead string done, then you just move right on to the next one. So I feel like this one's looking 
pretty good. And again, you can elevate any of these with additional white. You just kind of keep popping that, that brightness on there until you feel like you've got it into the brightness that you want it to be. And I'm going to wash my brush in a second here and go on to my next set of beads. Once I start putting these vibrant colors, this is this is the part where I don't I seem to go a little fast, but I definitely want it to have the that illusion effect for me. So just making sure that I've got enough on there. And of course you can keep tweaking these as much as you want to. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna go on to my next set of beads, which I think is gonna be my yellow one. So again, my highlight is yellow and white on my brush at the same time. So I'm adding that bit of highlight in the upper left-hand corner of these um, beads themselves. And you'll, when you get to the smaller ones, it's probably just gonna be a little tiny dot on them and you might not need any more work than that. But if you can concentrate on making sure that you can actually see that little bit of a highlight, that's going to, again, make sure the viewer knows that they're three-dimensional and they've just got that, they're just catching a teeny tiny bit of that light. And then I'm gonna come back, especially on these bigger ones, make sure that I have a good full coverage. These bigger ones, again, are closer to the viewer and they're gonna they're gonna call for a little bit more detail to them so once you've once you've established that highlight then you can just kind of tweak them as much as you need to I've got those couple of yellow ones over on the other um, on the far side over there so I will touch those in a second just making sure I've got these ones those look pretty good so I'm gonna go ahead and add my highlight to these little ones over here so top left hand corner i might just only need this little tiny dot for these ones but if you feel again that you need to um, tweak it at all with that original yellow color after you get that highlight on there feel free to do so and then i'm going to wash and dry my brush and go ahead and get these green ones on so wash and dry my highlight is green and white and i've got this big one in through here so i'm just gonna get these really large ones in through here. And then as I go ahead and get towards these smaller ones, I'm really just kind of giving it a quick little dash type mark up in that upper left corner of the bead. And then I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I have good coverage on the rest of the bead once I've got that, that highlight established. And you can see as I was going through this process, it was a pretty systematic um, approach for that highlight uh, on them. I would just kind of add the highlight and now I'm just getting it to blend in with the rest of the bead. You just don't want to be careful not to get rid of all of the darkness on the bead. So if you find that you have either over blended or added a bit too much highlight, lost your shadow or lost part of that dimension, you can always just let it dry for a minute and then just come back with some of that original color and make sure that it's got that darkness on the side that it needs to have the darkness, which would be the right hand side. And I'm just kind of making sure these little ones also have enough information in them. And then I just had that little strip over on the right hand side gonna add just a little little more pop of the highlight back into here make sure we've got enough brilliance in these shiny beads and then I'm gonna go ahead and move over to this right hand side again green and white are my colors on my brush put that little bit of a highlight top left hand corner of that bead and smaller as I go farther away. Now I'm just picking up some of my uh, original green to make sure that I have a good coverage. And then we have one tiny little step to go. Once you've got your beads on here and your highlights all nice and accentuated, let me just make sure that I've got these 
as fully developed as I would like to. And of course, this is one of those steps that once you get into, you might find yourself tweaking it. You might put, you know, 32 layers on it, whatever, whatever is comfortable for you and brings it into that vibrancy that makes you happy. You can certainly take your time. And then we're gonna use this small brush for the next step so you can just wash it and get ready. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I'm gonna use my small brush. I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right corner. I think I'm gonna sign this one in the bottom left. I'm gonna be using some black paint. I do mine with my initials, but you could certainly do yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you'd like. It's your identifying mark you can make it into whatever you would like it to be. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a very festive image. As I see, I've got some chalk left on my canvas <laughs> and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.